Coliseum here in Phoenix, Arizona. America presents and the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser, proudly present to you Fight Time on Fox. Let's get the action started. We have for you, first of all, six rounds of boxing in the junior middleweight division. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action will be El Munoz. Introducing to you first, fighting to my left out of the red corner, he's wearing the black trunks with red trim and weighed in at 155 pounds. Hailing from right here, Phoenix, Arizona, he has a professional record of 11 wins, one loss with five wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Fidel the Power Hernandez. And his opponent fighting directly across from him out of the blue corner. He's wearing the black trunks with white lettering and weighed in at 154 pounds. Coming to us from Augusta, Georgia, he is undefeated with nine wins and four of them coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Brendan Mitchum. Once again, your referee in charge, Al Munoz, now to give the instructions. First of all, I want a good, clean fight, guys. Remember, if you fall three times in one round, the fight's over. The mandatory count is in effect. All right, let's have a clean fight, shake hands. Let's As we take a look at the Budweiser tail of the tape, both these fighters 20 years of age, and uh, Hernandez uh, giving away three inches to Mitchum. Hernandez is just a pound heavier, and the reach is very comparable. Let's take a look at the rules here in the state of Arizona. Ten-point must system is in effect. The uh, three-knockdown rule will be in effect, but there won't be a standing eight count. The fighter can be saved with the bell only in the last round. The referee is the only one who can stop the fight. The headbutt rule, we go to the cards after three rounds, and we are set to go. Mitchum and Hernandez. And, Rich, you know what strikes me here? Even though it's in the 90s outside, it's rather cool in here, and both these fighters come in here rather cool. Yes, on Brandon Mitchum, you can see, obviously, that he has not broken up a sweat. I don't know if he warmed up in the dressing room at all before the uh, before the fight. And I think uh, both these guys want to get off to a quick start, Barry, in terms of trying to dictate the style of this fight, because I think the style is going to be very important in determining who's going to be the winner. Mitchum wants it to be an, an outside fight. He wants to fight at long range in box, and Hernandez uh, strictly is a close-in guy and wants to be there tonight. And I think that's a real must for Hernandez. If he's going to have any chance, he's got to get inside of Mitchum. Mitchum very sharp with his punches, still learning as he goes along. He, too, has had a couple of scares, but has managed to get away unscathed thus far. Mitchum is fortunate enough to have the wisdom, great training techniques of Eddie Futch, Thel Torrance in his corner, as well as his father, Randy, who was a former fighter, but there's no doubt that uh, Randy takes a back seat to Eddie Futch in that corner. Who wouldn't? <laughs> both fighters really sharp early in this fight, and both scoring pretty heavily inside. Yeah, Eddie Futch at 90 years of age is uh, still imparting that wisdom you spoke of. And fighters like Brandon Mitchum have the good sense to listen. Nice combination from Mitchum, upstairs and down. Yes, I think your comment about him being sharp is right on. Uh, Barry, he has come out, although he's cut now over the left eye. Mitchum got caught, and he just got cut over the left eye, and that could, being this early in the fight, could prove to be a factor. And it was a punch and not a headbutt, and it was a clean right hand by Hernandez that did it. So there'll be some work to do in the corner of Mitchum. And a little blood from the nose of Hernandez as well. Both fighters connecting a high percentage. Good right hand again by Hernandez. Very competitive first round. Mitch. Yes, the, the blood is coming down the left side of the face now. Mitch, and bleeding pretty strongly. I'm seeing a scrape now above the right eye of Fidel Hernandez as well. These two guys are getting banged up. I mean, they're going to be definitely showing the scars from this one. A tremendous very uppercut inside by Hernandez, who is succeeding here in getting to Mitchum early. Al Munoz uh, stopping the fight momentarily, taking a long look at the cut over the eye of Mitchum. And uh, as we said, there's some work to be done. And you can't always stop a cut like that in the space of one round. It sometimes takes two or three. Good right hand, and that buckled the legs of Mitchum. Fidel Hernandez comes in here with an 11 and 1 record and a good reputation. It's another good right hand, and now Munoz is going to have the doctor come in, and I'll tell you what, that will help Mitchum, even though there are only 15 seconds left in the round. But remember now, if this is ruled to have come from a punch, and that's what we saw, we did not see any headbutt. If they stop the fight, 
If they stop the fight, he would just be a TKO loser, Mitchell. If the if the ruling is, we'll find out after the round that he came from a punch and not a head punch. Well, it, it clearly looked like a right hand. I'm, I'm certain that I saw that as a punch. Now the question is not how we saw it, but how did Al Munoz see it? Big round and a very good round for Hernandez. We're going to go into Mitchum's corner now, and as we said, uh, work to be done. But there's no better people to do it than the people he has. They don't have the stool in the corner. They do not have the school stool in the corner of Brandon Mitchum, which means that they cannot begin work on that cut. That is some terrible planning in that corner, and they've lost maybe 15, 20 seconds, Barry, of working on that cut. That is a big problem, and I'm not sure that it was a problem of the corner. I think the corner is sort of looking at the commission saying, isn't it your responsibility to provide this? I don't think they had a chair there. Keep moving. Both ways. Left and right. Go stand in front of him. Get on his knee. And when you roll, when you roll, come up punch. Roll into that round. And right, let's take a look and see if we can see. There's a left hand inside that might have opened up the cut, although it appeared as though he might have brushed that punch aside with his glove. But there was no indication of a headbutt from Al Munoz. Although it was very calm in that corner from Eddie Futch. You can always count on that. It's not an excited corner over there, not panic-stricken. But again, your point well taken. They really didn't get a chance to do a lot of work on that cut. And Hernandez is going to try to jump on him right now. Remember we talked about who would be able to dictate the style of this fight. Would Hernandez be able to get in close, do damage, get within punching range of an outside fighter, Brandon Mitchell. He's able to do that. He's really found a home for that right hand. And the cut starts to bleed again. Another good short right hand by Hernandez. Hernandez very sharp in this fight. And this is his home area, so he's comfortable. And he came into this fight feeling he had everything to gain and nothing to lose, and that the only person really was Brandon Mitchum that had anything to lose in this fight. Well, he's a guy who's had all kinds of contractual problems. He's still embroiled in a contractual dispute. The left hand that time by Hernandez. He's got Mitchum hurt, I think. Mitchum's a little befuddled. He's got a very furious attacker right in his face here, and he's a little worried and a little disconcerted about how to put him off. He could start with that jab, but it's not effective, Barry. He's now, not keeping Hernandez away from him. Now the left hand of Hernandez is starting to find a home. Uh, now Mitchum is trying to punch here with Hernandez, and that's a mistake. He should be moving and jabbing. Uh, which is exactly what Eddie Futch told him. Don't stand in front of him. Hernandez is just walking to him, and Mitchum is willing to slug with him, but that may, there was a headbutt, but that may be the wrong uh, wrong strategy to employ. And the thing about Hernandez, he's not going to go away. I mean, this is a guy who has been in a couple of 12-round fights. He comes in here in very good shape. Another good left hand. Hernandez, clearly the stronger of the two. The voice you hear frantically screaming in the background is Brandon Mitchum's mother, who is over there trying, and she's walking around, and she's not in a calm state at this point. As you might expect. Again, there will be some work to do on that eye of Brandon Mitchum. And again, a combination from Hernandez. This is a big round for Hernandez. And it's going to be a long way back, I believe, for the prospect from Augusta, Georgia. A lot of work to be done for Brandon Mitchum here as uh, Vidal Hernandez has given him all he's wanted and a little bit more. There's another headbutt. We've had a couple of those. Without the jab, you come and hit hitting your hip, so that's no following anybody. Let's, let's right, go. Let's go. Come on, and they touch gloves and we'll continue. It was an accidental headbutt, both ducked in. Mitchum trying to get his jab to work now. 
if he can do that, it would help him in keeping his opponent away from him and off in long range. Brandon is a fine boxer. He had a tremendous amateur career. He was a finalist in the Olympic box offs and only lost to Fernando Vargas by a disputed decision in the, uh, in the finals. A very, very close fight. But he is having trouble keeping a real tiger off his tail here tonight. Well, he's, and you pointed it out earlier, he's letting Hernandez fight Hernandez's fight. And even there, although Mitchum got the better of that exchange, he's still in Hernandez's zone. And the blood again from the eye, Mitchum. Mitchum beginning to find the range himself a little in this round, though. And he's got Hernandez backing up a little. Hernandez, when he's coming forward, really fights much better. Another headbutt, at least according to Mitchum. And now a serious cut over the eye of Hernandez. That, that is every bit as bad as Mitchum's cut, maybe even more so. And that one, I think, was caused by the headbutt. Probably was. It came just moments after they were broken by uh, referee Al Munoz. That one is a very serious cut, and the blood is getting right into the eye of Hernandez. And now there'll be a little desperation on both sides here. Now this is key, this round has a minute to go. For them to go to the scorecards, if the fight is stopped by a head, but the third round must be complete. If they stop this fight before the end of the third round, it would be a technical draw. And that is trying to wipe the eye in close quarters. And backs up Mitchum with the right hand. And the clock in the corner of your screen, all important. All the way back, don't swing, don't swing. Don't swing. Don't swing. Don't swing. Let's go, come on. Hernandez definitely wants to make it through the round, figuring that uh, he would probably be ahead on points, at least at this juncture. Well, he is on both of our cards. Both fighters are bloodied, both unbowed. I do think Mitchum has done a much better job in this round, though. But this fight is going to finish the third round, and thus, should it be stopped, will be decided on the cards. Ready to go to round number four now. Hernandez and Mitchum. Hernandez with the red stripe. Mitchum in the all-black trunks. And it has been a war. Both fighters have been cut, both rather seriously. The fight goes on. Incidentally, Al Munoz did tell us between rounds that the second cut was, in fact, caused by a headbutt. So if the fight is stopped, we would go to the scorecards. Well, that that would be if it stopped because of the cuts of Hernandez. Right, exactly. <laughs> yes. If it stopped because of the cuts of Mitchum, it would be a TKO victory for Hernandez. That's right. There's a lot going on in this fight. And again, Hernandez with a left hand. And again, a headbutt. And now we got a timeout, and that one opened up that cut again over the right eye of Hernandez. And there have been three rather serious headbutts in this fight. I feel for now. Well, they both have about the same. Same. Yeah, yeah. I think he can go on. Let's take a look and see if we can pick up that headbutt now as they bang heads uh, about four times. That's a very bad clash of heads, and it came with a side swipe of the head. You don't often see it in that fashion. But again, that would, that would tell you that Mitchum is fighting Hernandez's fight because he is laying in there with him. Now, as you pointed out, Mitchum did have a better third round. Brandon is the better boxer, but there are times, like right now, that he's abandoning the boxing skills and looking to punch with Hernandez. It's a gamble on his part. Combination again and again, Mitchum is wobbled. Mitchum with the right hand. I'm hoping Brandon's mother can make it through the fight. <laughs> can you imagine? That would be a very tough chore, <laughs> watching your son get bloodied in a fight that you know is a very close fight. Brandon Mitchum is only 20 years old, and he's been fighting since he was five years old. His dad was a boxer. He used to go to the gym with his dad. 
Good combination again by Hernandez, and again it rocked Mitchell. And another good right hand, right on the button. And now Mitchum holds on. Again, a left hand, almost to Mitchum off his feet. He's a little, looks a little bit wobbly to me, and his face is beginning to look somewhat jaded to me at this point. Mitchum. Mitchum holding on much more than he has. I want to point out that Mitchum has been knocked down. Another headbutt. And not only do those cause cuts, they hurt. Yeah, but Hernandez can't just walk away like that, and because Mitchum is ready to pounce on him. I want to point out three fights back, Mitchum was knocked down by a fighter named Masia Kanas in that fight, and he got up to win the decision, and he showed some heart and grit in that one. But he's hurt by Mitchum. This is a red hot fight here, Barry. Terrific fight so far. Gonna take you now back into Brandon Mitchum's corner. Good round, Brandon. Okay, baby. Hey, Phil. Huh? Hey, Phil. Huh? Let me get that in. Yeah. Good, baby. Okay. Go and real good. You're going real good. Don't pull away from him. Don't pull away from him. You're underneath. Or go, go to the side. And back, and keep backing him up. Keep backing him up. You give him room. He get those punches on. How you feeling? How you feeling, son? Come on. Dig down. He don't like it downstairs either. He does not like it. That's good. Tough fight. Last couple of rounds been filled with clashes of headbutts. There you see one there, clash of heads. Both fighters felt that one. Both pointed to their heads, no doubt about it. There was one later on in the round. Hernandez just kind of walked around. I sent some concern from Brandon Mitchum's father there in the corner. It's been a brutal fight so far. I think it's interesting too, the advice that we heard in that corner was stay inside with him, try to dig uppercuts. They apparently feel that he could fight Hernandez on his terms. Well, I think what they want him to do is, is to back Hernandez up because Hernandez does not fight as well going backwards as he does. When he picks up momentum coming forward there, he really gets it together and he punches very hard. So they want him to move Hernandez back. Hernandez only lost, came in a five round fight. He has since put together a streak of four in a row, including the state championship here in Arizona. That loss was to a very good fighter by the name of Dwayne Tiger Williams, who we've seen in Los Angeles and who is fighting very well and coming up and is a very hot prospect, so no shame in losing that one. Mitchum got Hernandez turned around. The what first minute what of this round was very good for Brandon Mitchum. He's putting his punches together well, and his punches seem, in this round, very to be taking some effect on Hernandez. Well, it's been one of those fights where both guys have been on the gas the whole fight. Brandon showing some movement here, some nifty footwork, using the jab. I like what he's doing in this round. I sense a little bit of fatigue getting into Hernandez at the moment. They stopped him with a left hand there. But he, you know, he's dangerous. You know, he looks like he's got a head, like he's got a heavy punch, Barry, but he's only got five KO wins in his 11 fights. Don't swing, guys. Oh, we've got a little of everything in this one. Yes. Uh, there's not going to be any point deduction. Now Munoz just said that's uh, the first warning. Now this is really turning into a bloodbath. Don't go hurt each other. Okay, here we go. Let's go. They'll touch gloves. They will continue. It's 
it's been this way right since the opening bell. Very even round here. May still be there to be one. We'll be back. Well, rounds three and four were dominated by headbutts, but look at that low blow landed by Fernandez in round, Fernandez in round number five. And then Mitchum came back with a low blow of his own. So this fight has been even in every respect. Each has a low blow, each has a headbutt, each has a cut. Final round, and the fight may still be there to be had. It's interesting, Hernandez's people were saying they wished that they had eight rounds. I have an idea they may be glad it's six. Well, you know, I think the reason they're thinking that, Barry, is because his last three fights, Hernandez has fought 12 rounds, 12 rounds, and eight rounds. So he's much more accustomed. Mitchum's never had over a six-rounder. So they, they wanted the fight to be a little bit longer. But these guys have expended so much energy. Man. Stiff left hand, and again, it wobbled the knees of Mitchum. And another right hand, and a left behind it, and Mitchum is in trouble. He's a little bit wobbly, and it came out of the southpaw stance, which I thought Hernandez really hadn't been very effective with in this fight, but that certainly was a great shot. And another one backed him up. And they want Hernandez right on him now. As Mitchum doesn't have a lot of legs left here. That was caught on the glove. Mitchum showing quite a chin in this round. He has been wobbled on a couple of occasions. And now he goes down, really just, he never did hit the ground. Never did hit the ground. Referee, remember, can call a knockdown if it's felt by a referee that the ropes were the only thing holding him up. And, and clearly that was the case. Mitchum will do well just to survive. He has no legs at all. And Munoz taking a long look and calls it off. Well, I'll tell you what, Mitchum looked pretty done to me. I, I can't question that stoppage. Now that's quite an upset here and the first defeat for Brandon Mitchum. His father is very angry. The fight didn't have much, very much longer to go, but uh, nonetheless, he was really being hit and he was being hurt in that last round. Yeah, he had absolutely no legs, and that near knockdown really was not caused that I could see by a punch. It was just an accumulation. Fight stopped, then the winner is Fidel Hernandez. We'll talk to him when we come back. So we've had our first fight to go almost the distance, but not quite. Let's make it official. We go up to Thomas Driver. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the official time, two minutes, 12 seconds of round number six. Referee in charge, Al Munoz, calls a halt to the bout with your winner by technical knockout, Fidel the Power Hernandez. And ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for Brandon Mitchell. And Rich Murata up in the ring now with the winner, Fidel Hernandez, and it was a battle. Rich. All right, Fidel. That was a tremendous battle that you just fought with Brandon Mitchum. You know you've scored quite a sizable upset here. How do you feel after that fight? Uh, I feel good. Had about a month, month and a half to train for this fight. I knew Brandon was a very good boxer and fighter because I know him from the amateurs. Right. I, know, I knew this was going to be a tough fight for me. And what, I came did you wanted, what did you want to do strategically that you were able to do? It appeared as though you could impose your style on him. Yeah, I tried to, I tried to um, be first because he's pretty quick, you know. And uh, <clears throat> right there, I switched up on him because I'm a natural left-hander. So I switched up on him, and I was able to catch him with a straight left. <clears throat> yeah, the uh, left came out of the southpaw stance. There you yeah. saw him nearly go down. Did you think you had him going at that yeah, point? Yeah, I thought that was going to be a, a knockout there. I mean, a knockdown. But he, he cut back up, and I see there that I got a cut him over my right eye. Yes, you can see right first. here. It's, pretty, it's been a pretty deep cut. Yeah, now, but that was my there, first were lot, cut. there were a lot of headbutts during the course of the fight, and yes, things got was, a little uh, out of control, it seemed like, at times. Yes, because we both tried to throw the lead right hand 
and we ended up bumping heads. We should have thrown the jab before the right hand. Now you've had a lot of problems in your career in terms of uh, in terms of like promotional uh, situations, uh, contract, uh, manager, that type of thing with uh, with the promoter. Uh, it looked as though you put everything else out of your mind here tonight and showed up here to fight. Yes, I'm. Uh, I put all that to the side and uh, I did the game plan that my my coach uh, Tony is here here and uh, Danny Carbajal from Michael Carbajal's gym. I've been training out there and uh, they they're. I'm in very good hands with them. Well, you certainly fought a, a very good fight here tonight. Congratulations on the victory. We look forward to seeing you in the future, Fidel. Thank you very much. All right. All right. There's our winner. Back to Barry Tompkins. All right. We're out of the blocks very quickly here at the State Fair in Phoenix. When we come back, we'll turn to the heavyweights. Lance Mount Whitaker gets it on with undefeated Larry Menifee. That's coming up after this.